If you're disappointed with the latest round of graphics cards from Nvidia, and I don't blame you, there's still hope for you. If you've been sitting on eight-year-old hardware since the beginning and dying for an upgrade, there's still hope for you. Now, the intent of this video is to shed light on the beautiful used graphics card market, and I practice what I preach. I bought not one, not two, but three used powerful cards on eBay, and for the lot, I actually paid a lot less than retail. So let me break it down. Here's what I paid for each card. Up first is the GTX 980 Ti. We're looking at comparable GTX 1070 performance here with a six gig frame buffer, more Maxwell CUDA cores than the Pascal equivalent, and a beefy Amp Extreme custom PCB from Zotac, all in exchange for a higher TDP. Without knowing which card was older, you'd probably think the 980 Ti was the more powerful card. Pascal architecture does reign supreme, but the frame rate disparities beg to differ. I'm averaging well over 60 FPS and all titles tested up to 14 1440p with the 980 Ti, and I can even actually handle 4K to an extent, though I'd much rather sacrifice 4K for higher frame rates in lower resolutions. I should also add that 1070s right now are selling for similar prices in used markets. I've found some EVGA cards for as low as 240 bucks used, and that to me is a really great deal. I've searched eBay primarily and always sort from best price. You can filter down to just the buy it now option if you aren't interested in bidding, but don't be afraid to pitch a few offers if you're comfortable. In fact, this GTX 1080 right here was the one that I bid on. The 290 Ti's were buy it now sales, and one of them I picked up for 260 bucks. When I got a little more familiar with the market, I found the second one, identical card, uh, same design and everything for 220 bucks. That was a much better deal in my book. So right now you can find 90 Ti's in all shapes and sizes for around 200 bucks. Again, custom PCBs, bigger coolers are gonna cost just a bit more. And 1070's for around 250 bucks. Great values when seen in the context of new prices. As for the GTX 1080 here, I paid 320 bucks for it, though I lost to another bidder on uh, an identical card later on for 300 bucks. So I'd try to stay around this mark. The 1080 is considerably more powerful than the 1070 and 980 Ti. And and may be worth the extra hundred bucks or so if you intend to ramp up in-game settings. This card right here uses a reference PCB, by the way, so if you want an aftermarket uh, add-in board, something that's been customized just a little bit for higher power loads, let's say, higher overclocking support, uh, then you might pay a bit more than $300 for that particular card. And by the way, with respect to eBay's bidding system, if you intend on bidding and notice the current bid is much lower than you'd be willing to pay, let's say there's a day left in the bidding cycle, you can always place a bet much higher than this value and eBay will actually increase the bid in around $5 increments when others bet until your max bid is met. So for example, if a current bid on a card is 150 bucks, but you'd be comfortable paying up to 200 bucks for it, place the $200 bid and eBay will only place a $155 bid or so on your behalf. If no one else bids on that card after that point, then you'd only pay 155. But if someone bids you up, eBay raises the stakes in $5 increments until your $200 cap is met. It's a good way to ensure you pay the lowest price possible for the item without needing to sit in front of your screen all day until the sale closes. So if you place an initial bid and someone immediately outbids you, it just means that their total bid was higher than that bid that you just submitted. By the way, if you're worried about whether or not these cards were used for mining, there's really no physical way to tell. So you kind of have to rely solely on context clues. If a seller's getting rid of dozens of 1070s, for example, he or she is probably a miner. If you literally see a picture of a mining bench in the background, probably a miner. You get the point. This isn't a foolproof job and you'll never really know for sure, so it's something you have to be okay with up front. Now, if you're adamant about avoiding mining cards altogether, a safer bet is probably going with the Maxwell Gen stuff. Still not foolproof, though most 980 Ti's, for example, weren't used for mining, or probably weren't, since a lot of these cards were released in 2015, people bought them in 2015, 2016, and the mining craze really didn't peak until around 2017, 2018. So uh, they may have been used for mining, but they weren't bought for mining, so they probably weren't run 24 seven, you can kind of rationalize it in your head, but I would say Pascal would be more affected by this than Maxwell. So if you're okay with the higher power draws from Maxwell, these are probably your safer bet if you don't want to get into the mining stuff, which again is hit or miss. So let's just say the odds are better for the Maxwell stuff. By the way, if you need something a little weaker for around 120 or 140 USD and you're comfortable again buying used, there are some pretty great RX 580 and GTX 970 deals. So the chances of 580s being used for mining are probably higher than 970s. 
but if you're set on the used graphics card market again, this is the risk you've got to be willing to incur. And RX 580s are great for some medium to high 1440p gaming, 1080p is a breeze, and they'll be much more efficient than their Maxwell, uh, you know, alternatives. And I mean, to be honest, if the card runs out of the box when you buy it used, it probably will run for the next few years at least. Think about how many CPUs, for example, randomly die despite running for long periods of time. Server CPUs literally never stop running, and you don't hear about too many of those needing replacement. Usually it's DRAM, or it's some moving component like a hard disk drive. A graphics card is like its own mini computer, but it's all on board, right? So it's a little more fragile, but again, unless you slam the card against something or bend it in a weird way, it probably won't die anytime soon, even if it was used. And all that really means is that it sat in a computer and got intermittently hot. So, chances are, if you're watching this video, you're at least interested in the possibility of buying used. Now, I know eBay's screwed over more than one person in the past, there's always a horror story or two in the comment section, but in a general sense, if you buy something and it turns out to not be what you thought it was, maybe it just doesn't work or it didn't come with all the gear that it should have, you can return the item and get your money back under the eBay buyer protection guarantee. It's safer than Craigslist in that respect and only requires five to seven days worth of shipping time in most cases. So if I was building a computer today, I would forego RTX completely. I mean, come on, those prices are ridiculous. I would even forego Pascal if we're talking about new cards and buy straight up use. The value here is just too good to pass up, but that's just my opinion. Now I wanna know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below and include the most recent graphics card you purchased along with whether it was new or used. If you're considering an upgrade, I strongly urge you to check used markets first, Craigslist, eBay, OfferUp, they're all great starts. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool, dislike it for the complete opposite feeling, or if you hate everything about life, you guys can click that red subscribe button if you haven't already, you can join us if you wanna be fancy with it, and we'll catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.